I greet you this morning in the lovely and precious name of Jesus. It's a joy once again to be able to share with the, the word of God with you. Thank you for taking time to listen, to watch, wherever you are. We invite you to, uh, if you are on Facebook, to uh, share, like, a comment. Uh, also subscribe to the YouTube uh, channel. Amen. <clears throat> I trust that your week was wonderful. Uh, he's a good God. Amen. Uh, today I just want to share with us on a subject that I've entitled Developing the Recreated Human Spirit. Developing the Recreated Human Spirit. Um, we'll begin in um, Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 5. We will read um, verse 16 and verse 17. Galatians chapter 5. So it says, so, so I say to you, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the sinful uh, nature. For the sinful nature of the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the uh, sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. Verse 16 says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Walk in the spirit. I want to zero in on the phrase, walk in the spirit. Why does it say walk in the spirit? Because uh, what we need to realize and to remind each other is the very fact that our spirits uh, that are born of God <coughs> um, are, 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 are made new according to Corinthians. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. So our spirits are made new. They are recreated and they are born of God. And therefore we are able to uh, effectively walk in what the spirit of God wants of us or what God requires of us. In, uh, so that's why we are able to walk in the spirit. In Proverbs chapter 20 and uh, verse 27, this is what it says, Proverbs 20 verse 27. Um, says the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord searching all the inner depths of his heart the spirit of man is the lamp the King James Version would say is the candle of the Lord searching uh, all the uh, in inward parts of the belly so here it says the spirit of a man is the lamp or candle lamp candle is indicative of direction it's indicative of, of, of light. Um, and so that's why it says God lights up uh, within our spirits. God guides us through our spirits, uh, not through our minds. He speaks to us within our spirits. Uh, because we are born of God, our spirits therefore can be uh, guides that can be relied upon. They can be safe guides. Um, and we can rely on the leading that comes from within our spirits. That's why Galatians say, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill uh, the lust of the flesh. In uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, we made reference uh, uh, to this scripture some time back. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Heart, spirit is one and the same thing. So he says, keep your heart with all diligence. Um, or in another vision, above all that you keep, keep your heart. Hallelujah. Uh, in other words, he says, with, uh, with all diligence. Uh, in other words, it's not a one-time thing that you do. It's, 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 uh, it's constant. You've got to be watching over your, your spirit. Uh, so it says, keep your heart. Or safeguard it. Or protect it. Or, or hedge, hedge, hedge ab about your heart. Uh, hedge, uh, so safeguard your heart. Um, uh, another vision says, keep with all your keepings. Hallelujah. Keep with all your keepings. So it says, out of it spring the issues of life. Issues of life. Uh, another vision says, the forces of life. Another vision also says, the life springs of life. In other words, everything that you need to live spiritually and physically you can pick up within your spirit. Uh, I like what one, st uh, one, statement, uh, one statement what uh, which one preacher made. It says, for us to live, we need to pick up things in our spirits. We need to pick up what the Spirit of God is saying within our spirits. 
uh, let me do emphasize that never will the the leading of the spirit contradict the word of god it's always in line with the word of god and then uh proverbs 20 verse 5 tells us this it says uh, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water but of men a man of understanding will draw it out so counsel uh direction uh, it's it's there it, it's it's like deep water and men of understanding uh the the picture that i have is somebody who's drawing water out of a well who who you know the well uh, in the olden days or probably even these days where you, there's a bucket at the end of a rope so you you throw it down into the deep well and then you you draw out the, you pull the rope and you draw out the water uh, that's the picture that they get for proverbs uh 20 verse 5 where it says counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water and a man of understanding will draw it out we got to take time to draw that counsel that uh, that uh, direction from god within our hearts god speaks to us within our spirits because the spirit of man is the candle of the lord is the lamp of the lord that way he speaks light uh, uh in our spirits um um i, I remember uh our previous message where we sp spoke about the tabernacle of moses uh that the holy of holies uh which sp speaks of the the spirit of man um it, 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 there was no uh natural light there the only light that would be there would have been the glory of god so the same thing here it says the spirit of man is the candle of the lord searching all the inward parts of the belly so god searches the inward parts of the belly he gives direction within our spirits um uh, in uh, hebrews chapter 12 uh, i had made uh, uh, mention of the scripture earlier on in verse 22 it says but you have come to the mount to mount zion to the uh, city of the living god to the heavenly jerusalem and to the innumerable uh, company of angels uh, to the great meeting and church of the firstborn, to, gen to the uh, general assembly of the firstborn, uh, those that are mentioned in heaven, and, and to God the judge of all. I like the last part. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. He's speaking about the church of Jesus Christ. To, to the general assembly of the firstborn, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, and then he says, to the, the spirits of just men made perfect. Notice, just men made perfect. Where are we made perfect? in our spirits so we can rely on the guidance from within our spirits um reading in um in second uh second peter second peter chapter 1 verses 2 to 4 let me just quickly open second peter chapter 1 uh verses 2 to 4 uh, this is peter writing he says grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ as his divine power has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him has called us by his own glory and goodness as his divine power has given us everything that pertains or concerns life and godliness so he has given us it's in his word and uh, uh, as we yield our spirits to his word we are able to pick up even direction of how to access those things that pertain to life. He has given us everything that concerns life and godliness. Amen and amen. So it's important therefore uh, to be able to, to uh, pick up those promptings, those nudgings of the spirit within our, within our uh, spirits, those nudgings of the Holy Spirit within our human spirits um, as we listen to him. In Proverbs chapter 18, Proverbs chapter 18, Proverbs 18, reading from verse 14, Proverbs 18 verse 14, it says, The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness. This word sustain means to maintain, to nourish, to hold up, to defend. To measure out a provision of food. To support. To supply the measure needed for living. It's a rich word. Okay, I'll say it again. Read the verse. This is the spirit of a man. Will sustain him in sickness. 
but who can bear a broken spirit? So the word sustain, we just said, it means to maintain. So to nourish, to hold up, to defend, to measure out a provision of food, to support, to supply the measure needed for living. That's what our, our spirits yielded to God can do for us. We can be sustained, we can be nourished, we can be held up. We can uh, get the necessary uh, supply that is needed for living. Hallelujah. We can uh, be, be, uh, be able to defend against sickness. It goes on to say, but who can bear a broken spirit? In other words, if your spirit is broken, you are finished. There is no defense at all that is there. You are bound to fall uh, in, in, uh, as, a, as, a, as a believer. So it's important, therefore, to guard our spirits like Proverbs 4 verse says. Proverbs 4 verse 23 says. Um, so Proverbs, let me just read another uh, verse in Proverbs. Proverbs 17 verse 22. Uh, it says, A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. Where we just read, uh, it says, but who can bear a broken spirit? So when we are broken within our spirit, um, uh, we, we, we cannot defend against sickness or any other uh, onslaught that the enemy can bring against us. Hence the need to guard our spirits, to defend uh, where it says, with all your keepings, keep your heart. Guard your heart, safeguard it, uh, watch over it. So, uh, that's what we need to do. In uh, Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 4, Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4, in all of these I'm using the New King James Version. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4, it says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Perverseness in it breaks the spirit. In other words, uh, what we speak when we speak perverse things, uh, perverse can be wide, the definition of the word perverse. Uh, in other words, we could, uh, in a simpler way, put everything that opposes God's word uh, is perverse. If you speak things that are contrary to God's word, it will break your spirit. It says perverseness in it breaks the spirit. Perverseness in your tongue. When you speak things that are contrary to your spirit, you, 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 you break your spirit. I, I, I like uh, one particular phrase that I wrote many years back as some preacher was sharing, that our spirits are programmed by words. Uh, so what you say is important. What you confess is important. If you speak perverse things, you break your spirit. Um, you, 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 you cannot rise above the very thing that you are saying. Uh, when we speak about confession, we are speaking, the word in the Greek is homologia, uh, speaking the same words is. Uh, that's what confession means. So we must be able to speak the same things as God has said in his word. In other words, no matter what we face, uh, we, we must be able to confess the word of God. We will come later on. That's a, a, a another way, one of the ways to develop the recreated human spirits by speaking uh, God's word, meditating and on God's word and speaking it. Um, and so that's what it says here, that perverseness breaks the spirit. Uh, we must be careful of the things that we speak. We must be careful of our confession. Um, so the words that you speak can break your spirit, but not only you. The words that others speak can also break your spirit, um, which means we must be careful what we listen to. We must be careful what we hear. Uh, <clears throat> in Job chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, it says, Then Job answered and said, How long will you torment my soul and break me in pieces with words? He was talking to his friends that kept speaking things that were negative. Uh, it says, These ten times you have reproached me. You are not ashamed that you have wronged me. Uh, but the verses that I want is verse 1 and 2. It says, How long will you torment my soul and break me in pieces with words? So not only the words that you speak, but the words that others speak can affect you. You must be careful what you hear. You must be careful what you listen to. Uh, 
Uh, so remember, it says perverseness breaks the spirit. We must be able to have a healthy spirit uh, and guard our spirits ag against the onslaught of the enemy. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 15, Proverbs chapter 15, uh, reading in verse 13, Proverbs 15 verse 13 says, I've already read it, a merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the spirit of the heart, the spirit is broken. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. So, uh, uh, it, it, the che cheerfulness uh, is important. It, it also uh, helps to lift up your, your, your spirit, cheerfulness. Uh, here, that's what it says. Um, so, in other words, the condition of our spirit, of our heart, also come, uh, affects our, our countenance, our, the way we look, our faces. Um, it can be seen. Um, so, sorrow uh, can break the spirit. So, it's important, therefore, to guard uh, against that. James chapter 1 and verse 26. Uh, it says, If any man among you thinks he's religious, and does not brightly his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. In other words, it says you must brightly control your, your, your tongue. Um, if you don't do that, you are deceiving your heart. If you don't control your tongue, you deceive your spirit. Hey. So it's important, therefore, that we watch what we say. Uh, we watch the words that we speak and the words that we confess. In James chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, one to two says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in, in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. He, if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a mature man. Hallelujah. So if you don't stumble in your words, you are a mature person. Maturity therefore requires that we don't stumble in our words. We watch what we say. We speak what we say. And that maturity therefore uh, uh, builds up our spirits. That's what uh, the maturity comes in. Uh, you destroy with your tongue the, the very things that God wants to do in, in your heart. So it's important. These are the things that we need to do as we watch over the recreated spirit. Re let's remember again. In Romans chapter 8 where it speaks about the spirit bearing witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. It, 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 in other words, if we can know that we are going to heaven by the witness in our spirits, if that can be reliable, without us having been to heaven, uh, we know that we are going because of that witness. It is, imp it, 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 it is an, uh, therefore uh, an obvious and uh, a matter of, of course, that the very same witness can be able to guide us in our everyday uh, walking. That's why it says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Um, another thing besides even words that can affect our spirits is disobedience to God or rebellion to, to, to his word. When we disobey God and we rebel uh, uh, against his word, that affects our spirits. So we need to be able to uh, therefore watch uh, how we walk and be able to obey what God's word says. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 4, we have made reference to it uh, earlier on. Verse 23, what we find are things that I would term protective devices for our spirits. Protective devices for our spirits. In verse 23, this is what it says. It says, uh, where we read, Keep your heart with all diligence, diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. The first thing that we find in verse 24, it says, Put away from you a deceitful mouth. In other words, to protect your spirit. And remember, the first, uh, verse 23 says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, spring the issues of life. So, and then it tells you what you need to do. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. In other words, it's saying, stop lying. 
be truthful be somebody that tells the truth uh, lying contaminates our 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 spirits our conscience you 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 mix up the truth and so it is important that therefore that we are not people that uh walk in lying so to protect our spirits we must stop lying uh if you're used to adding a few lies here and there you must stop doing so because you contaminate your conscience uh, as you go against the truth you contaminate your your heart stop lying he says put away from you a deceitful mouth and then uh, he goes on to say, put perverse lips far from you. Remember, we've just mentioned what perverse lips are. Perverse lips are lips that speak things that are contrary to God's word. So don't speak things that are contrary to God's word. Uh, and then it, 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 it goes on to say in verse 25, let your eyes look straight ahead. Look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So Hebrew says, Hebrew says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, that is another avenue of protecting our spirits to look unto Jesus, not to remove our attention from God. Fix our attention on Jesus Christ. Amen. So that's what we need to do. And your eyelids should, not, should look right before you. That's what he, he continues to say. In verse 26, he says, ponder the path of your feet. Consider where you are walking. Uh, make sure it's the right direction. Evaluate your life. Uh, are you doing the right thing? Are you, are, are you walking in the right direction? Hallelujah. Uh, so ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. So you must check your life. You must examine your life all the time and see that you are walking in, 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 in righteousness, in the truth. Because when we are walking in dis disobedience, it is difficult to hear the voice of God within our spirits. Even though our spirits are the candle of the Lord. Or the lamp of the Lord. You can't, you'll be you'll confuse your spirit because you 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 are walking in um rebellion in in in, in disobedience to God's word. Then he goes on to say in verse 27, do not turn to the right or to the left, remove your foot from evil. So we need to remove our feet from evil and not walk in evil. So these are protected devices for our for our spirits. Uh, we need to stop lying. We need to stop speaking things contrary to God's word. We need to look unto Jesus, the author and the finish, finisher of our faith. We need to consider where we are walking. Consider the path that you are walking. Make sure it's the right direction. Remove your foot, your feet from evil. Walk in righteousness. Do not walk in evil. So it's important, therefore, to be able to do those things. These are the things that help us to be able to uh, protect our spirits. So, what are the things do we need to do to develop um, our spirits, the recreated human spirit? The first thing uh, that uh, 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 I want to put in terms of, in addition to all the things that I've said, is give attention to God's word. Uh, that's what he tells us in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, uh, this word book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate it up upon it day and night and observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. You will uh, make, you will have good success. You will make your way prosperous. Another vision goes on to say you will be able to deal wisely in the affairs of this life. Hallelujah. Um, so it's important um, that you are, we are uh, able to do that. Uh, meditate, give attention to God's word. Uh, put it first in our lives. Uh, let it be the first thing. And then he mentions, uh, which I put it as number two, Joshua 1.8 also mentions it, is to meditate on God's word. Uh, he, he mentions that you shall meditate upon it uh, day and night. Psalm 1 also tells us the same thing, that we must meditate on God's word. Um, uh, dwell, let your mind dwell on God's word. Uh, think it over and over in your mind. Speak it, matter it, uh, because that's what the word meditate means. It means to matter, to sigh. Uh, it means to, 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 to repeat God's word quietly to yourself. Um, was to shut, uh, uh, shut, out, out, shut out all outside influences. So that they all add outside disturbances. So that you are not disturbed. So you give attention to God's word. You meditate on God's word. Uh, these are uh, 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 things to help you develop your spirit. Not only do you do that. But you must then, the third thing, act upon God's word. James chapter 1 
verse 22 says, But be, be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. Be ye doers of the word, and, uh, 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 and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. So we must not only give attention to God's word, meditate upon it, but we must act on it. We must be doers of it. He says if we are just hearers alone, we are deceiving ourselves. We must uh, be doers of the word, act upon the word of God, live in obedience to God's word. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that we need to do, the fourth one in developing the hu our human spirit is to instantly obey the, the voice of, 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 of our spirit when, uh, when, we, when God speaks to us. Instantly obey. In James chapter 1, uh, where we read earlier on, it says, If anyone amongst you thinks he's religious and not, does not bridle his tongue but, but deceives his own heart, this one's religion is useless. In other words, we must be people that uh, are able to act on what God speaks to us in our hearts uh, and obey what he tells us to do. So these are the things that we need to be able to do to develop our human spirit. Um, that is why Paul says in uh, uh, Galatians chapter 5, what we read earlier on, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. So walking in the spirit, the word walk is speaking about your lifestyle. Uh, in other words, live according to what the spirit dictates to you and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh because the flesh and the spirit are contrary to each other. They, 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 are, they are fighting against each other. But for you to be able to overcome, you must walk in the spirit. Like I said, uh, that quote that I spoke of earlier on, pick up the things that the Holy Spirit is dropping in your heart and you'll be able to uh, uh, l w indeed walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Those promptings that the Holy Spirit brings across in your heart, those nudgings, pick them up and listen to them and act upon them uh, and you'll be able to, to uh, indeed please him as you walk in the spirit. So it is important therefore uh, that we are able to do all these things so that we are protecting our spirits and as we protect them we are able to clearly hear what God is saying within our spirits as we uh, read in Proverbs where he says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Uh, many of us that have uh, uh, time and he now, now and again probably missed it you know that within your heart you knew uh, as you uh, made wrong uh, decisions you knew there was a prompting but probably you, you ignored it and you didn't listen to it sometimes it's not a matter of not uh, ignoring it you couldn't hear because you were walking in sin when you're walking in sin you can't be able to hear what God is saying so it is important therefore that we are able to pick up these promptings of the spirit that we are able to hear what he is saying uh, as, uh, and therefore it is important that we uh, protect our hearts, protect our spirits, develop our spirits uh, that we are able to uh, uh, hear what the, what, the, what the Holy Spirit is saying. Um, I think one other thing that I can add on there is to pray the prayer in other tongues. As you continue to pray in other tongues, you, 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 you make your, your spirit to be alert and to be able to hear what God is saying. And so, uh, as New Testament believers, it is imperative that we are able to develop our human spirit and are able to hear what God is saying to us. Like I said earlier on, the Holy Spirit or the promptings in our, whole, in our spirit will never contradict the word of God. It is always in line with the word of God. And so I trust that even as I share this with you today, uh, you are encouraged uh, to, 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 to walk in the spirit even as Paul the Apostle encourages us. Uh, if you have not made uh, Jesus the Lord of your life, that is the first step before you even talk about walking in the Spirit. You must be able to confess Him as Lord of your heart, even as Romans 10, uh, verse 9 and 10 tells us. Confess Him as Lord, that He died and rose again from the dead. It says when you do that, you will be saved. You will become a child of God. And that is important. And then from then on, your spirit is born of God and is born, you are born again. You will be able to hear the voice of God and you will be able to walk in the spirit. So I encourage you to take that step if you have never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Um, for those of us that are believers, uh, the word that I leave with you is walk in the spirit 
and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Uh, develop your spirit so that you are able to effectively walk in the spirit and not fulfill the desires of the flesh. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you for taking time to listen and to watch. Uh, it's always an honor. God bless you. Amen.